Hey everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore. Welcome to my channel. Today is going to be the last Christmas in July because July is almost over. So you'll be seeing Christmas things from here on out, off and on, not every week <laughs> because we will be pre-ordering our Stampin' Up! holiday catalog August 2nd so you'll be seeing some of the new stuff coming in our new holiday catalog coming soon and so you'll be seeing things off and on um, Christmas but we are going to be the last this is going to be the last one for Christmas in July so this is what I'm sharing today and you can put in here some post-it notes any kind of like a notebook, something like that. This actually, the box measures itself is four inches by four and it's one inch thick. Yeah, this is really an easy one. One thing you have to remember when you are making this is whatever you put on the front has to be able to go through the slot right here. So it's gonna have to be just the size where it'll slip through here. But it is Velcroed shut, so and then it just opens like that. I have a Kit Kat bar in there, so you can put sweets in here, you can put a small gift, but I really wanted to use this Cardinal again because I just love this one. And this is from the So Very Merry stamp set. It is an online exclusive. It is this one right here. So this is what I'm using. You can use the bells, you can use this, or you can even use these little um, circled ones right here. But I decided to use him because I love this little cardinal so much. And I'm using the Very Merry from here. Now I am using a few die sets. I'm using the layering circles. You know I'm always using these. So I'm using the scallop here with the cherry cobbler. This is Pretty Peacock that I'm using for the box. And then the basic white is just a regular circle. I just layered them. And then I am using the Nested Essentials. You know how I love these right now. Um, and I'm using the one that's the second largest in here. And that is for this handle, this flip part right here. And I am then using the stitched rectangles and that is to cut this. You can even hand cut this if you have a exacto knife. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. This makes it so easy if you have the stitched rectangles. Or if you have a punch that's um, a rectangle, you can use that. And then I am using the 6x6. Six six, and this one is our glorious gingham. And you know how I love gingham, but I'm using this side of the gingham this time in the Pretty Peacock. And I love the Pretty Peacock because it is a really good one, too, for Christmas as well. And I love it with the Cherry Cobbler. It really went really nicely. We are going to watercolor today because I didn't want to use the blends again. I wanted to do something different to make it look more um, stained glass. So I am going to watercolor this. And I'll share that with you here too. And I'm just using our regular thick cardstock for this. Um, you can use watercolor paper as well, but I it worked just fine on the regular thick cardstock. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go ahead and we're going to stamp and we're, we're going to emboss the bird with the Memento Black and Clear embossing powder. So let's go ahead and stamp that. And I'm sorry that you're hearing, if you're hearing, every time I decide to do a video, I feel like my neighbor's getting their lawn mowed, or they're mowing the lawn, and uh, <laughs> or my husband's mowing the lawn. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to also do the Very Merry this time. I didn't, I just stamped the Very Merry, but we might as well just go ahead and emboss it as well. So I am just going to, you know you can emboss any color ink if you have clear um, embossing powder. So you can just, you got to do it pretty quick whoops, while the ink is still wet. So you need to do it real quick. You can see that it's grabbing on to the um, embossing powder. 
and it looks really pretty and it's really nice when you color over that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my little tweezers and I'm going to hold this and we are going to use my heat emboss tool here and we're going to heat that. Okay, so that is all heat embossed and it gives it a really nice space to color in and it looks really pretty. I need to grab my little Swiffer because I got embossing powder all over here. Alright, so we are going to, like I said, we're going to color this. We are going to use Pool Party, Pretty Peacock, Pecan Pie, and Cherry Cobbler. We're going to use Cherry Cobbler for him. Now I pressed the ink and the inside of here and that's what I'm going to use one of our water brushes and we are just going to squeeze some water out here and I am going to let me zoom in for this so you can see it better let me scoot these up a little bit alright so I am just going to start coloring and you won't get it you won't cover the lines because it already is embossed and it keeps it in the line but it's 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 really fun to do I love to watercolor I'm gonna grab one of my little so I have some control over the water so I'd like to pick up some darker and then like darken some of the areas lighter. I'm not going to use black. I had the other cardinal I did. He has kind of black on his chest, but I'm going to just do it a little bit darker. Here, I'm not going to I'm not going to do it in the black. It's really pretty watered color, watercolored though. All right, just need to do his tail. I'm just adding a little bit dark. All right, so that is that. Close this up, and I need to grab my paper towel. And you want to squeeze the water out to make sure you get the red out of there. So you can move on to your next color, which I'm going to do the pecan pie. I already squeezed some of this out. You just need to squeeze your pad real hard and we're going to do the pecan pie here again I'm going to just use some darker and if you the more water you have in your brush the more lighter the color will be Okay, that's that. I'm going to clean off my brush again. Close that up. And then I'm going to use the Pretty Peacock for... Oh, I don't have much on there. So you really need to squeeze these because they're really tight. And then just add your water. If you use watercolor paper, you're going to get a little bit of a different... You can really, really like blend this out and everything um, but I didn't think it was necessary because it's just a small image damp up that water because I don't want that getting in my ink and then the pool party I am just going to use for a round gonna make sure I got all that out and I think I got some in here and I'm going to use some more water on here because I want this really thin Oops. now I got my 
my finger in there. I just want this really thin because I'm just going to do a wash like around the bird. Oh, I'm getting some red in there. Don't really want the red. Let me wipe that off and get some clean. Oh, you know what? I have the alcohol one. No wonder it's not, um, it's drying super fast on me. I was thinking, why is this drying super fast? I have alcohol in here and I didn't mark it alcohol. It will dry super fast on you, so use water on here. I need to get a little bit more ink. Yeah, I was wondering why it was drying so fast on me. You really have to work fast if you're using alcohol. Okay, so that's all I'm doing on that. Now I, I would have used water. That's why I couldn't get as much shading as I was I got in my last one. Because <laughs> it's alcohol in this pen. I used a different pen and I grabbed this one because I have two sets of these. And this one has alcohol and I do have it marked right there. I didn't pay attention though. Alright. So what I did next was I cut this one out. And this circle, by the way, if you want to know what the circle is, it is, it's two and a half inches. Not quite two and a half. It's about, yeah, it's two and a half. And then this one, the scalloped, well, the scallop's two and a half. This one is, it looks like almost two and a half. <laughs> They're close, but the layering circle, it's two and a half, so you know which one will go with that. So I am going to use some glue, and we are going to glue this on here. And then we'll make the box. And I'm going to add some final details to this at the end. And you will see that in just a little bit. So there is our little cardinal. All right, so I'm going to zoom you back out, and we're going to make the box. All right, let's set that aside. So the piece for the box, this is 10 and a half by 6, and then I did cut, this one's with the nested essentials. I cut the second largest from that. That's going to be our little flap. And then the, this is 3 and 3 quarters by 3 and 3 quarters, and I'm only matting the front. You can do the back, then just cut two of these. All right, so let's get scoring. All right, so to score this, we're going to score on the 10 and a half inch side at one half, one and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. Oh, I haven't done that in such a long time where I run off the thing. I'm going to grab my bone folder. I did it on two parts, but this will actually flatten it out and it really helps. I got one little part right here too. All right. All right. Now we're going to flip it and we're going to score it on the six inch side at one and five. All right. So that's it. Okay, so now to cut this, we are going to cut this bottom corner off here. This half inch is going to be our glue tab. And I'm going to cut into these. And this will be the bottom of our box. So on the top, you are going to cut these two off here. And then we're going to cut into here. 
and we're going to cut this little flap off right here. Okay, so that is it. Now I'm going to have to bring the cut and emboss over here to show you how I did the top part. And so this is the stitched rectangle. This piece, it's three quarters by two and three quarters almost. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just guesstimate on here where I want that. I'm going to run it through using a piece of my mint tape here. So make sure it's centered. And we're going to bring the cut and emboss here, and I'm going to run that through. And you do have to tuck these under to get it through here. Okay, and then this one we have... And then what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I have to do it this way because I want to cut on this side. So I'm going to do it this way because <laughs> I want the stitching to show on both sides. So make sure you just l layer these over each other and have make sure they're all even. And then you can mark this little rectangle. And then I'm going to run this one through the same way. I'm just going to take that piece out. And then I'm going to line this up. Right over that. And then we're going to run this one through. It's really easy. Just make sure if you're using the stitch rectangle, you want the stitches to show on both sides. So just make sure you mark the right side. All right, so there's our handle. Scoot this out of the way because we don't need that. We already ran everything else through. And we're gonna put it together. So I'm gonna use my bone folder. And we're going to sharpen all these. And I am going to use some Stampin' Seal Plus on my glue tab here. And we're going to just fold this over. And now we'll put our bottom back. And it doesn't matter which side goes. Whatever side um, folds back is going to be your front. So this will be my front right here. And I'm going to use some regular stamp and seal here. And we're going to, oh, we need to score this. And I'm only going to score this with my ruler because I just need to score the center. So I'm going to line that up. Just score across there. It just makes it easier to get it on your box here. And let's mat this piece before we put that on. You can use any of these sides. I just thought the other side kind of looked a little bit... I mean, it looked very Christmassy to me. <laughs> so this is my front. Put that on there. I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus. Either use Tear and Tape or Stampin' Seal Plus for this part. And we are going to put it on here. And then I'm going to put this through here. And I want to line it up so it's in the center. So just hold your handles together. Make sure that's in the center and then you just seal that down. Now you're going to have to squeeze your sides in and then that flap goes down there. 
Now, what I want to do is grab my Velcro, and I will have the Velcro, it's in my description in the YouTube video, and this description below will be all my supplies I use that aren't stamping up, it'll be in there. So I'm going to put these together, and we're going to just add it right here. And just press it down really good so you can lift it back up. Now, do I have anything I can stick in here? No, not really. I had a, um, a Kit Kat that I put inside the other one. But I don't have any other candy to put in here that's right up here with me. I'm sure I have another Kit Kat bar because those are like one of my favorites. I'm just pushing this out. All right, now let's grab our little piece here, and I'm going to glue this one on. You be real careful when you're gluing this that you don't move it um, until it's dry. So this does fit through here really nicely, so always make sure that that's what you're going to do with it. It's got to fit through or you're not going to be able to open your box. All right, now last but not least, I am using our pearlized enamel effects and I'm using the little white <laughs> to make little snow drops on here. Some are gonna be little and some are gonna be big. I still gotta grasp how to get the perfect sizes on these. It doesn't matter really, but sometimes I'm very picky about those things. Like that one's a little bit too big, but we're gonna work with it here. I'm gonna grab it really quick. And you know we got a little gadgets, a lot of little gadgets for the end here, and I'm just gonna lift that really quickly off of there, and I'm gonna just do one little small one there. Cause you know, I won't be happy unless it's a little uniformed one. There we go. And that is it. So there you have it. It's all done, ready to go. Here's the other one. When it dries, it's super pretty. But can you see on this one how I got like different, um, I got some really lighter parts and darker parts. Using the alcohol, it wouldn't really let me do that. So use water when you're going to do that, if you're going to watercolor. You can do it with your blends as well, but I really like the watercolor look. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. If you need any supplies, you can know you can shop on my blog at stampingwithamora.com. Here's July host code. It's almost over. So I hope you'll have a blessed one. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, everyone. Bye.